Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17.0.3 to the public. iOS 17.0.3 is available around the world at the same time and is available on all iOS 17 supported devices. That means from the iPhone XS and XS Max all the way up to the latest 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now this particular update was released alongside one other update with iPadOS 17.0.3 and nothing else. So those are the only updates out today. And then we had beta updates yesterday, which I covered in a separate video. Now, if you're a beta tester, you won't see this update as it's only available for those that actually are on 17.0.2 or older. Since you're a beta tester on 17.1 or newer, you're on a newer version. You just won't actually see the update. You would have to use a computer to downgrade. Now, as far as the overall size, this was not a huge update, but came in at 423.2 megabytes on my 15 pro max. And this particular update does include some fixes. First, let's take a look at the build number and then we'll talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go down to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 21A360. This particular build fixes a couple things. There is no modem update in it, but the one thing that it does fix that Apple said that they would be releasing an update for soon and they have is the iPhone 15 overheat issue. This particular issue Apple is saying does not affect performance and should fix the issue with it overheating. We'll check Geekbench scores in a little bit and we'll also check heat after running this again, since I checked it during the iOS 17.0.2 Geekbench scores as well. So this fixes those overheat issues specifically on the iPhone 15, 15 plus 15 pro and 15 pro max. However, it mostly seemed to affect those on the pro models as far as any additional fixes. Well, Apple actually hasn't said, so you'll see here, it says, it provides important bug fixes, which I wish they'd give more information about security updates. We'll take a look at in a moment and addresses an issue that may cause iPhone to run warmer than expected. So it's definitely fixing those issues. Hopefully it resolves it for most. They also said that some apps could affect this. I've seen this where WhatsApp and Instagram were affecting it, but Apple said they would work with those developers to actually fix those issues. And I think they've already released updates for that as well. Now, as far as security updates, let's go ahead and take a look at that since there are no other bug fixes that we know of. But if we go into Apple's security website, you can see here as we scroll down, we've got the latest iOS 17.0.3 and iPadOS 17.0.3. If we go into it, there are two fixes that they mention. One is for the kernel, the underlying code that runs the OS, and the other is for WebRTC. To read this is where it says impact. A local attacker may be able to elevate their privileges. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited against versions of iOS before iOS 16.6. They fixed it with the issue was addressed with improved checks, and then they give the CVE number. So there's two things here that they list that are important security updates. So they've done that as well. I just wish they would tell us about additional bug fixes. And speaking of bugs, if we go into our notifications, the notification bug seems to be still there. It sort of jumps around as you can see there still an issue for some people. It's not a usability issue, but is an issue that affects just the way things look and feel. So hopefully they fix that in a future update. We've talked about that for quite a while. As far as performance, I would not expect any differences. We'll check Geekbench scores in a moment, but basically going from anything from an iPhone 11 pro max, to an iPhone 15 pro max, you really shouldn't see any differences as it's a 0, 0.0 update. So 0, 0.0.3, there really should be no differences there. And the same is true with battery as well. I would not expect any differences with battery as it shouldn't affect that. However, if you were having the overheat issue, it should improve it in theory. So hopefully it does that. And let's take a look at some battery life. This particular phone of course is going to be on hundred percent battery health as it's brand new but you'll see battery health and charging. We're at 100% capacity. I had someone else send in their battery life. That's been running 17.0.2 full time on a 15 pro max. Let's take a look. And thanks to Cameron for sending this in. And you'll see he had seven hours and nine minutes of screen active time and charged it a little bit because he went over hundred percent. But then another day you'll see four hours and 10 minutes and had about 50% usage with 17.0.2. He's getting about eight to nine hours of screen on time. Pretty decent. Not as good as I would like to see maybe from iPhone 14 or iPhone 13 pro max, but maybe this will resolve that issue. If there were some stuck processes causing this problem. Now, as far as the overall heat of the device, I ran benchmarks twice using Geekbench six, just to heat the phone up a bit and see what temperatures we got. This isn't necessarily representative of what you would have in the real world, running apps and having it get very hot, but it gives you an idea before and after performance. So we have about 102 degrees. Take 
take a look, and then we'll run Geekbench scores after that. Now I've run Geekbench two times in a row just to see what the temperatures would be like before I installed the update. We're at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, as you can see there, and if we flip this over, you'll see on the back, it says 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I saw it hit 102 degrees. Now I'll actually install the update. As you can see here, we have 17.0.2. Let me get the update installed, and then I'll test it in a minute and see what we have. Now the benchmark completed, let's take a look at the heat and it's 107 degrees Fahrenheit after running it twice. So it's a little bit hotter than it was last time. It doesn't feel that warm, but it's just something worth noting and 105 degrees Fahrenheit on the back. Now keep in mind those that were experiencing the overheating said it was above 114 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe even hotter than that, and they couldn't hold it in their hand. This does not feel hot in my hand, so it cools down very quickly that way. However, that's pretty high compared to what I saw before. Either way, we'll have to give it a few days to see if this fixes the actual issue people were having. Now, as far as the benchmarks, as you saw it there, I ran it twice. And if we go to the CPU history, you'll see here we have 2,939 for single core, 6,916 for multi-core. If we take a look at what we had before, it was slightly higher. Now, to be fair, we just installed this and ran it. The ones I ran before had actually had a few days to process. So these typically will bump up a little bit, but they're very close. I don't really see any difference in performance. In fact, they're so close that I don't think you're going to see any change whatsoever. Now, as far as if you should install iOS 17.0.3, well, if you have an iPhone 15, absolutely. For the security updates, I absolutely would, especially a kernel update where it fixes a patch or patches an issue there that was exploited. Definitely recommend it for that reason alone. However, if you're on iOS 17.1, it still remains seen to whether or not they've fixed it or patched that issue with the heat. Hopefully we'll get some sort of statement from Apple about that, but we just don't know if you're running iOS 17.1 beta 2, if you actually have that patch. And speaking of the next release, iOS 17.1 beta 3, I would expect it as soon as next Tuesday. It seems we're on a rapid release schedule with this. Maybe we'll see it by the end of October as we're expecting the double tap feature on watchOS 10.1 to be available in October at some point. Then we'll move on to iOS 17.2. So that's pretty much everything with iOS 17.0.3, just a minor bug fix for the iPhone overheat and a couple security patches. Hopefully we'll get some new features like that journaling app in a few weeks. Let me know if you found anything else, noticed anything different with iOS 17.0.3. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.